In May of 2020, hackers orchestrated a sophisticated attack on Binance, the biggest cryptocurrency exchange in the world. The attack resulted in the transfer of over 7,000 Bitcoin. The value of the Bitcoin at the time was around 40 million US dollars, making it the third biggest attack on a cryptocurrency exchange to date. The Bitcoin was transferred from Binance's digital hot wallet to a pool of unknown digital wallets, presumably owned by the hackers. Experts from a research team in Luxembourg traced the transaction records of the unknown wallets and found that almost 5,000 of the 7,074 Bitcoin were being laundered through a service called Chip Mixer. But what does mixing chips have to do with laundering Bitcoin? Well, Chip Mixer is an implementation of a Bitcoin mixer. And what does a Bitcoin mixer do? Let's explain. Bitcoin itself is exchanged on a decentralized public ledger called a blockchain. When a Bitcoin transaction occurs, the transaction is recorded on a decentralized public ledger that is organized into blocks which are chained together. Hence the name blockchain. To the blockchain, a transaction does not occur between people, it occurs between addresses that look like this. And a digital wallet is essentially a container for multiple addresses which is accessed with a username and password. The users connected to the addresses are anonymous, so although all transactions are recorded on a public ledger, there's no way to know the identity of the persons who own the addresses. But the addresses will be very carefully monitored, so actually using the Bitcoin is not simple. The hackers need to either transfer the Bitcoin onto an exchange to be traded for fiat money, or the Bitcoin needs to be transferred to someone else in exchange for goods or services. Public exchanges implement something called KYC, which stands for Know Your Customer. This means that all customers on an exchange need to be strongly verified and associated with a real person. So moving the Bitcoin onto an exchange and exchanging them for US dollars would be a pretty bad move. The other option is to try and use the Bitcoin to purchase goods or services from merchants that have unregulated verification processes. So say you decided to spend the Bitcoin on the dark net to have some shady stuff shipped to your house. If the police catch the owners of the website, which they very often do, then they could be able to trace the transaction back to you. For these reasons, it is very important for criminals to obfuscate their addresses as much as possible. So this is where Bitcoin mixers come into the story. A criminal wanting to send Bitcoin from address A to address B cannot send the Bitcoin directly because any investigator would clearly see that address B now owns the criminal Bitcoin. So the criminal uses a mixer service as the middleman. The criminal will start by making a request on the website of the mixer service. The service will then receive Bitcoin from address A and mix it with Bitcoin from other customers as well as with Bitcoin reserves held by the mixer. After this is done, the mixer will send the Bitcoin to address B. Mixers charge a fee of between 1 and 3% and a user has to send the Bitcoin to the mixer with no guarantee that the mixer won't just run away with the Bitcoin. But assuming that the mixer is legit and sends your Bitcoin through, there's still another big issue. The mixer is probably recording transactions and this means that they will know the addresses of the source and targets of any transfer. So they may decide to sell this data or they could be compelled by the law to share information. For this reason, the hackers will need to pass their Bitcoin through multiple mixing services to make it harder and harder to track them down. We should mention that mixers aren't just used by criminals. They're also used by persecuted groups and political dissidents that absolutely need the highest degree of privacy possible. So that leads us to our next question. Are mixers legal? Well, I couldn't find any situation in the world where mixers were explicitly illegal, but laundering Bitcoin definitely is. In February of 2020, a resident of Ohio by the name of Larry Harmon was arrested for running a coin mixer called Helix. He was indicted for money laundering conspiracy and operating an unlicensed money transmitting business. So mixing may technically not be illegal, but if your service is likely to be facilitating money laundering, then I'm not sure you do too well in court, which is probably why I couldn't find any record of who owned Chip Mixer or where they were based. As for the Binance hack, it doesn't look like there's any evidence to suggest that the culprits have managed to move the Bitcoin onto any exchanges. And the Luxembourg team have suggested that the hackers are still holding onto the Bitcoin. So, like everybody else, they hardlin.
Hey guys, thanks for watching. We're a new channel, so if you like the content, please like and subscribe.